St. James. Andrew, what was the appeal in signing with the Red Wings? Um, I think it's just kind of growing my game uh, and having a good opportunity along with a really good young team. Um, I think that, uh, you know, from what I've seen, it's a, it's very similar to the teams I played on in Winnipeg and New York, where you kind of go from out of the playoffs and then all of a sudden you're a contender. So uh, I feel like there's a lot of really good pieces here. And I think today with with a bunch of the additions, it's uh, it's, a, it's an exciting time and just uh, ready to take the team to the next level. That was going to be my, my follow-up. Do you sense with all the signings that Steve did make today that he kind of really sent a message, you know, this this team's coming out of, out of the rebuild and he wants you to be a part of that? Yeah, definitely. I think that was a big draw. I think, uh, you know, being a leader on and off the ice and kind of being able to impact any situation is kind of, um, you know, my strengths. And I think, you know, along with, some of the guys that have won or, you know, been in the finals like Sherrod and Perron. And um, so I, I'm really excited about the the additions today. And I think that, uh, yeah, we're definitely poised to take a big step this, this season. Lastly, uh, how many, how much of family do you still have in the area? Yeah, a lot. Uh, I mean, my, both my parents, brother, uh, cousins, aunt and uncle, grandparents. So um, yeah, there's, there'll be a, probably some big cop contingents at the games now. Thank you. Max Boltman. Andrew, I'm curious, did you have a feel for how many moves they were going to make today when, when you signed? Did you know they were going to go for Sherrod and Perron and all that? Uh, I saw uh, Sherrod at a wedding uh, about 10 days ago, and um, we were kind of just joking around and kind of the, the full market hadn't really kind of set out. We hadn't really had those deep of conversations yet, but kind of joked about it. And then um, – but otherwise, I, I honestly had no idea how many guys he was going to add. Felt like he, he would do a few more. But uh, to the extent that he did today, I think just kind of shows the belief that he has uh, in the group and the, and the guys that he's added. And feels like there's, you know, the next step is ready to be taken. And then when you had your conversations with Detroit, I mean, I, I imagine they see you as, as a center. Was that part of the, the conversation at all? Yeah, I think for the most part, um, I think Steve really likes, you know, my versatility, being able to play any of the three forward positions and kind of impact the game. Both both special teams, you know, been playing on a checking line before and playing in a real scoring role as well. So I think just the, the versatility is probably his biggest thing, but I think definitely in the beginning, probably start off in the middle. And then last thing for me, what did you personally get out of that long playoff run that you guys went on in New York? I think... I don't know. You, I think you learn a lot of little lessons along the way and, you know, being down 2 nothing to Carolina and down 3-1 to Pittsburgh about how to just kind of stay in the fight mentally. Um, but you just, you know, it's, it's such a tough road and you got to, you got to enjoy it while it's happening, but not, but not take it for granted. You know, there's been to the conference finals twice that, you know, in my first seven years and, um, you know, I definitely don't want those to be the only two times. So it'll be, it's, it's a long, hard road, but it's so worth it in the end. Thank you. Welcome back. Thanks. Ed Colfin. Hey, Andrew, how do you explain the offensive surge here in the last year or two? Um, I mean, I think I've just continued to improve on my game. I think I've gotten a lot better over the years and um, felt like it was always kind of in there. It just kind of wasn't really asked something I was asked to do too much, whether it was, you know, playing in a checking role or, uh, you know, concentrate on the defensive side or the PK. So um, definitely worked on my game a lot. And, um, you know, with, with, you know, some production and then comes confidence and it just kind of snowballs. So I um, feel like I still have areas to get better and still have room to improve. So looking forward to, to getting back to work and doing that. And hopefully it can improve upon, uh, you know, the last couple of years. You kind of alluded to it, but you, does this kind of remind me, does this kind of remind you of the Winnipeg and the Rangers here the last couple of years, just the way they're kind of toward the end of a rebuild or whatever? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, the, the year we went to the conference final in Winnipeg, the year before we missed the playoffs by like six games. And, you know, all of a sudden the next year uh, we were kind of a powerhouse and had the second best uh, record in the, in the league. So, um, yeah, that change happened so quickly. And same thing with the Rangers this year. They kind of went from, you know, a team that wasn't really projected to make the playoffs to, to being in the conference final and up to nothing. So against the former champs. So you never really know when that jump's going to be there, but uh you know, I feel like I got a, I got a lot of faith in, in where this team's headed and a lot of the, the young talent that's, that's you know, come up through the, the last couple of years. And then obviously the, the guys that have been here, like Larks and Bertuzzi, feel like we're, uh, we got a good group and just kind of ready to take the next step, like I said. 
The last one, is it still kind of crazy that you own the state passing record in a single game or what? <laughs> I don't think it's mine anymore. I think someone's passed it, but uh, I knew there was going to be some football comments today. I, okay, were you – it's probably an old bit, but how – were you considering football at all too or what? I mean – um, A little bit, but I, I broke my collarbone my senior year and I just kind of felt like – that was kind of the end of it. If I had kind of continued on and had a good playoff or something, I think uh, there would have been a little bit more chance of me playing uh, football, but felt like, I mean, I was on the U S national team too for hockey. So I just felt like uh, I was better at hockey and still enjoyed hockey more and felt like that was going to be a better option for me going forward. Good stuff. Thanks, Miss Andrew. Yeah. Thank you. Larry Lage. Hello, Andrew from Ann Arbor. How's it going? Good. How are you? Um, Good. You talked a little bit about having faith in this organization. Obviously, they had it in you to give you a, a long-term contract. Can you just kind of uh, share some more thoughts on, um, you know, you believing in Steve Eiserman and his plan? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, obviously, Steve, you know, did a great job building the team in Tampa and not to take anything away from Breezewa, but, um, you know, Steve was there for a while and, and kind of, drafted a bunch of those guys and, and turned that into, um, you know, a, a big part of, of where they're at today. So uh, I think, you know, that trust kind of stems from there and um, and then just kind of seeing the the product on the ice the last couple of years, I think with, you know, Raymond and Cider, it really <clears throat> was an influx of talent. And I think, you know, everyone across the league saw it and saw it as an opportunity where, um, you know, Detroit's going to be good in a couple of years, just wait. And so, um you know, I'd like to be a part of that. I'd like to continue to grow with the, with the team. And, and like I said, just trying to get to that ultimate goal. So um, a lot of work still have to do a lot of young players to incorporate. And, but I think, you know, as Steve showed today, he's, he's ready and willing to, to get some players and bring them in and uh, add to this group. Gina Trotman. This kind of piggybacks off of um, Larry's last question, but I think I heard earlier, in the day you did an interview and you said this isn't a one-year this isn't a two-year deal testing free agency and the choices that you could have made why choose Detroit uh in the process that they are in yeah like I said I mean there's a couple different instances where it could have been you know a team that's a little bit more in win now and uh I just felt like the opportunity to continue to grow and um, you know, have a, a, a leadership role and have a good opportunity compared with um, or prepared with the, the influx of talent and uh, the trajectory that this organization's on. I think, um, you know, it, it might take all five years. It might take, you know, might be past that, but feel like this organization is headed for, you know, really good things. And then the sky's the limit. So, um, like I said, you know, it's not a one or two year decision. It's a five year decision. And I'm um, looking forward to, to spend all five years and hopefully more uh, with the organization and try and get to that ultimate goal. And Sarkhan. Yeah. Hi, Andrew. Uh, just wondering, uh, has Dylan uh, reached out to you and just what, uh, what's it like, uh, you know, just being reunited with him? Yeah. Him? Yeah. I, I talked to him uh, a couple of days ago, kind of seeing, um, you know, just, bouncing ideas off of him and uh, seeing where he's at and everything like that. So um, it was a really encouraging talk. And, um, you know, I, he always kind of hinted at getting me to come back home. So um, we've talked definitely today and talked about the additions. And I think both of us are really excited for, for where this team's headed. So um, it's kind of funny just being his captain at Michigan and now he'll be mine in Detroit. It's, uh, it's pretty cool. Did that help with the uh, just kind of recruiting process and, um, his thoughts about the team and yeah I think I mean it's just good good to hear his thoughts of where the team was and um, you know how I can add and all those types of things so I don't know if he was necessarily putting on too much of a recruiting pitch just kind of trying to answer my questions I think he knew I was interested and um, you know wanted me to you know make the decision you know for me at the end of the day but we're, I think we're both really excited to be back together thank you John Neal I was going to ask about Dylan as well, but I'll ask this instead. I mean, were you a Red Wings fan growing up? And I guess, could you detail a little bit of your childhood fandom, if so? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, growing up in the, the Iserman, Shanahan, Lidstrom, and then into the Datsuk Zetterberg era, I think, you know, I was a huge fan of Detroit growing up and remember watching a lot, maybe not so much the early Cups, but the 2002 and 2008 
um, you know, championships, I think, you know, was, you know, big parts of my childhood. So uh, it's, it's cool to be coming back home and trying to recreate the magic a little bit, but getting to play for your hometown team is, is, uh, you know, really rare in this league. And I'm just kind of fortunate enough to, to, to be able to be one of those guys that gets to do it for, you know, a few years here and, um, you know, enjoy being around friends and family, you know, the whole year instead of just for a few months in the summer. Only be Anchi. Andrew, uh, welcome to Detroit. When you think about, you know, that, that football career that you alluded to and the broken collarbone and getting into Michigan at the last moment because somebody, I think it was Max Pacioretty, left to your journey now as a fourth-round pick, getting to sign with your hometown team. What do you make of that journey and just how serendipitous and, and you know, the, probably surreal, I would imagine it is, to, to be able to have a day like this where you're, you're faxing your contract over to your childhood hero? Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. I think, um, you know, it's definitely hasn't been a, a linear progression. Um, it's been, you know, a lot of ebbs and flows, a lot of adversity over the years. And I think, um, you know, I think my hard work and, you know, willingness to bet on myself and always having that confidence that it's all going to work out and overcome any adversity is, uh, it's pretty cool to, to be rewarded like this today. So, um, you know, going to enjoy it today for sure. And, be around a lot of friends and family, but, uh, you know, once tomorrow hits, it's time to get back to work and time to, you know, like I said, like try and impact this way, this team as much as possible in a positive way. And, um, you know, like I said, try and try and get this team to the playoffs. How big of an impact do you think playing at Michigan had on a red Barons and some really good teams there, you know, Jacob Truba and all those guys. Yeah. I mean, I think just the, the competitiveness day in, day out, getting to practice against some of the best players in the, in uh in the world really uh i think has kind of helped you know frame my competitiveness and uh frame my mindset for for handling adversity and those types of things so um definitely helps shape me as a hockey player and as a as a as a man art regner hi andrew uh, i am curious about uh everybody that grows up wants to probably be a professional athlete and at one point in their life and play for the hometown team uh can you talk about is it a surreal day for you today or is this a, a very satisfying day for you today because you may have accomplished a boyhood dream uh, by being able to put on that red wing sweater very very soon yeah i think it's uh it's i don't know i don't know if either either one of those doesn't make any you know i think both of them make sense i think it's pretty, I think as of right now, it's pretty surreal. I think it's, it still hasn't completely set in. It's, um, you know, 45, 45 minutes down the road uh, for me in Ann Arbor. And it's just, it's cool to, to celebrate with friends and family that have kind of been there, you know, along the way and, um, you know, continue to be a huge part, huge part to my support system. So um, now that they'll get to see me play more than, you know, once or twice a year or, or on the road, I think it's, um, it'll be, it'll be really fun to, to get this thing going right away as soon as possible. And um, yeah, just, I just want to, just, just want to start training camp tomorrow. But, you know, I, I, I really want to ask you that if you look at, we always hear about the mystique of an original six team and obviously everyone here from Detroit, you know, embraces the original six and, you know, yeah. you played with Winnipeg and you obviously played with New York. I, I'm kind of curious, is there that mystique? Can you, is it a different feeling when you played for the Jets, when you walked into an arena or you were facing an original six team? Um, a little bit. I mean, I think, you know, walking around New York, there's definitely a certain mystique, a certain aura. Um, and definitely, you know, in the playoff run, uh, the certain atmosphere in the rink, I think for sure, uh, especially when an original six team is doing well. So, and there's a certain expectation, I think that goes along with that too. So, um, yeah, really looking forward to just kind of walking around the room and kind of have to pinch myself a little bit walking around in the, in the Detroit Red Wings locker room. So, um, super exciting time and, uh, can't wait to get everything going. Like I said, when you knew that maybe it wasn't going to work out with the Rangers, you're going to hit free agency was Detroit at the very top of the list. Did you know what their needs were and that you pretty much fit the bill? Yeah, I, I did my homework pretty well at, at, at the end of the year and kind of seeing where I fit, um, you know, across the teams in the league. And 
Um, I would say Detroit, New York were a couple of my teams that were definitely at the top of my list. So, um, you know, when, when things with the Rangers didn't really work out, I think it was an easy uh, pivot for me to, to want to come to Detroit and we were lucky enough to get something done and that I fit their needs too. Final question. Uh, Luke Lendenning, a uh, former Michigan Wolverine captain, much like yourself, um, and also an excellent high school football player, much like yourself, uh, always said that he missed football. He missed the contact of football, even though he was a professional hockey player. And he said that he was a, he had a football player's mentality, but he played hockey. Do you also miss football? And do you have a football player's mentality in your approach to the sport of hockey? Um, I definitely miss football. I think that is, it was such a great time in my life. I will say though, that I don't think, I think Glenner was a running back or a linebacker where that physicality is a little bit more prevalent. Uh, me being the quarterback, I don't know if the football mentality necessarily translates to hockey as much, except for um, distributing the puck and making plays with vision and whatnot. So I, in that aspect, I think a little bit, but um, I, I don't, I think Glenner is, you know, a perfect example of a guy that just works so hard day in and day out and is such a good leader and leads by example and everything like that. So I don't want to put myself in, in that category necessarily, but uh, um, you know, I feel like you know, I have a lot of those same attributes and uh, you know, want to bring those to Detroit and help the team win. Thank you very much, Andrew. Welcome to Detroit. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Nate Brown. Hi, Andrew. Uh, you just talked a little bit about uh, leading by example. Red Wings are still a young team. There's a lot of prospects in the pipeline that are coming up. What lessons do you hope to teach them, not only by example, but really like what you've learned, not only at the college level, but also in the NHL? Yeah, I mean, I think that will come out over time. Um, you know, I think first and foremost, you just kind of want to develop relationships with, with the guys on the team and um, definitely not trying to come in and act like you know it all and want to, you know, and, you know, just share your knowledge with everyone. So um, it'll be it'll be great to, I think, get to meet the guys and, um, you know, get everything started that way. And then from there, I think it's it's more about the intricacies. It's more about, you know, certain plays and or, you know, playoff situations and whatnot, you know, how to handle those and how to handle, you know, maybe being down in a series or handling, handling adversity. I think it kind of really depends uh, from from player to player. So, um, you know, I think, you know, I got I'll have a lot of experience at this point and and, you know, hopefully have some things that I've learned along the way that I, that I want to share with the guys. But I think that'll kind of come out organically over time. And, um, you know, as as I start to earn the hopefully in the trust of my teammates and, um, you know, kind of build this thing together. And then have you been able to speak to anyone from the new coaching staff yet at all? Yeah, I talked to uh, Coach Lalonde um, a little bit today, a little bit yesterday. So, um, yeah, I felt like we, we really connected, thought about the game a lot of the same way. So uh, definitely looking forward to getting everything started with him. Thank you. Last question, Carly Johnston. Hey, Andrew, welcome to Detroit. Um, I saw on NHL.com that your mom was a figure skating coach and your dad, a hockey coach, coached you as a youth. Did you get a lot of uh, coaching from them with your skating and your gameplay, a lot of critiques, and has that helped you growing up? Yeah, I think, uh, I don't think my dad let my mom get to anywhere near me. I don't think he wanted me to turn into a figure skater. So she wasn't allowed on the ice with me, but um, definitely for my dad, I think, um, you know, I kind of play the way a coach's kid would typically play and try and, um, you know, be, you know, no nonsense, you know, do all the right things, play on the right side of the puck, um, just kind of make the right plays over and over and over again. So uh, I would say my dad had, a, you know, the biggest impact on my career of anyone and uh, definitely wouldn't be where I am today without him. As a kid, if you had a bad game, how were those car rides home? You know, when he was coaching, he was kind of focused on the whole team. So those were better than after he was, after he was done coaching me and I played bad because then he was only watching me. And then those car rides got pretty quiet. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm sure they're happy to have you home. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right. Those are all the questions we had. Andrew, thank you.